Hello. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, this is the August uh, session of uh, Sitco User Group Columbus. Uh, one of the organizer, Himadri himself, uh, is going to present a uh, very short introduction. Himadri is a 10 times Sitco MVP. Uh, I'll give more time to Himadri to introduce himself. Himadri. Yeah, thank you, Malik. Um, so this month, actually, I decided to present this. Um, so first of all, like, you know, um, if you are from India and have some connection, uh, today is the Independence Day. So it's um, happy Independence Day uh, to every one of us. Um, so what I want to talk today is actually um, finding the um, hosting provider that works for uh, for your project or for for your client. Um, I was recently thrown into um, and if you are an architect, um, basically time to time you will be thrown into this situation where like you know you have to help your client or or your project to decide out of many hosting provider um available for your site core XM cloud rendering host uh which one is most appropriate for uh, for the project or or for your client and recently i have been actually working with clients and at least for two occasions i have been thrown into that kind of situation as an architect, um, I had to actually dig into like, you know, different information and and provide guidance to the client uh, to find out like, you know, what is best for for their um, project. And uh, so uh, there is no like, you know, single answer to uh, to this. And I'll go through to the session to talk about um like you know what you can do or what is the way to actually um find out information and make a make a decision um so a little bit about me uh, uh molik already mentioned that i am a 10 time sitecore technology mvp um i have been working with sitecore community for long time and it's just, it's a great place to be, you know. Um, so uh, professionally, I work in Burndell. Um, I'm a senior architect there. Uh, I um, I do site code and I am quite involved with the e-commerce side of um, uh, many projects here too. Um, so I have some blogs. Um, the first one I usually like in a I use that one for um, for all my site core related um, articles, and then the other one, uh, which is in hasnot.deb, I really explore like you know uh, in general architecture and technology stuff going on in the industry. Uh, I am active in the LinkedIn, and um, when I'm not doing uh, my professional work or or job, um, I actually um, have a hobby. I spend my time on photography. Um, so, what we are going to talk today is uh, like you know loosely the agenda is um, why why this matters. Like you know to select a platform for hosting site code XM cloud. Uh, website um, and um, it's a decision that actually matters. We will we'll talk about that. Um, what choices are there? Like you know, what hosting provider um, you can actually um, recommend for your client, and uh, then we'll look into like you know how to get to the uh, decision. What you need to think about when you are making such such decision. Um, so 
why it matters because first of all like you know as i said there is no single answer when you are looking into it you will not find a single answer for uh, for your uh, search or for your choice um but it is something that is important because it's a long term decision for the client or for your project when you are choosing a platform or choosing a uh, hosting provider you have to stick with that hosting provider for quite some time okay you do not want to choose something and then like you know you want to change it because that that will make a lot of um you will put a lot of effort uh to actually host your website um so so then then you have to think about there are many choices and can i actually the best may be the one that i uh, i really like to um like you know host my site but can i can i afford it and there are different perspective of like you know uh, choosing a platform because the if you spend more money you will get um like you know best best platform maybe best hosting provider but do you really need it like you know a lot of things when you are choosing you have to think about like you know you might want to spend a lot of money to have performance but performance is always a relative thing um a company which is like you know selling goods and there is a black friday event where millions and millions of people connect to the website um needs a uh, like you know very reliable performant website but there are clients for them like you know black friday is not a concern um so they they might not be needing like you know such kind of performance or reliability so uh so you cannot like you know just think about performance and spend a lot of money you have to actually decide like you know how much you want to spend so based on that you have to make decision um also like you know when you are thinking about um choosing something you have to think about the future like you know your business will grow and can the that from i am choosing today like you know if my business grows can it scale um so maybe i should spend money now so that my business grows and i don't have to make the changes um so or maybe maybe i can i can decide later to go to another platform um because when my business grows so so those are the things drives your decision um also when you are as an architect when you are making this kind of decision you will see like you know there are um people probably in the client side or like you know they are used to some sort of technology and they will like you know although if, if even if it is against their um like you know against their benefit sometimes people actually push back because they are comfortable with that kind of technology so you will get some sort of push back uh, because the skill set exists that actually not the one that you were you were proposing so those are the kind of challenges you will you will face when you are choosing choosing a hosting provider and you have to actually convince your client or or people who you are working for that why you are proposing this and a lot of time like you know you to do that you need to actually put your argument and in a way that you can actually prove the, to them that this is good for you and and like you know uh so you really need to know what you are talking about and then like you know uh, how is the future technology going um uh, but at the same time sometime we think about like you know um like something called fomo which is fear of missing um stuff like you know for example what is going on with ai there are a lot of hype there right and people think if i am not 
typing into AI now, I'll be probably missing something. So that kind of thing comes up too. Like, you know, your decision should not be driven by uh, by fear uh, that you will miss something. Decision should be made on the practical, um, like, you know, terms. So those are the few things that I think we should think about. Okay, so when we are talking about hosting a sitecore website, um, it's called rendering host, and as you know, like you know, on the XM Cloud side, this is called editing host. But rendering host is really a website hosting. And if you think about sitecore website rendering host, um, it's really a Next.js application. Like you know, if you if you like you know, use Next.js as your development platform. There can be other other technology. We are not talking about that today. But if you are using Next.js as your um, as your development uh, platform, uh, and you are using Sitecore JSS, so really what you are hosting is actually a Next.js application, uh, and th that's all. There is no tight core um, involved as such for the rendering host uh, to make the decision where, where which this hosting provider you will be going with. Um, all you should care about is that your hosting provider supports Next.js features, Next.js application. So if you think about Sitecore JSS, which is really a Next.js uh, based on JSS framework is based on Next.js if you are using Next.js as the framework. And then Next.js is really based on uh, React.js. Uh, for example, if you are using JSS image component, which you will be using um, if you are building a site core website because you want to have the ability for content author to actually um, make changes, um, on the like you know on the um, pages or or experience editor, uh, then you will be using something like JSS image com component. But underneath JSS image component, it is going to use Next.js image component. And why it is important because Next.js image component will give you the image optimization and things like that. So so it's really the Next.js application, and then like Next.js. JSS in your application, you will be using Sitecore headless services to connect to your XM Cloud headless um, content management system. Uh, and when it comes to like you know Next.js feature, as you know that um, there are things that Next.js um, gives you is or the way you will be implementing Next.js site is uh, really either you can use static site generation, SSG, uh, which is like you know static HTML plus CMS plus JavaScript. This is typically the default um, like you know approach that we take in the in in the site core JSS, um, where like you know your you generate static static um, HTML and, and resources and deploy that in your hosting provider and then deal with the dynamic part of it using JavaScript. Um, if you want to use, you still have option to use server-side rendering, which is like, you know, if you send a request to Next.js, it will actually process that request on the server-side and return you, like, you know, the result, like, you know, um, your fetch your data and like you know make your page components and return that to the to the uh, to the browser. Um, in addition to that, you have ISR, which is incremental static regeneration. So static site generation, there could be some uh, pages that actually periodically changes, uh, and that is handled by the um, ISR. And we'll talk about that, how that works in, in a bit. Um, so, and other than that, um, 
you can in an XJS application or in a Sitecore application, you can still like you know have your API uh, created on the head, uh, like you know on the Next.js side. Um, so to to be clear, in the XM Cloud architecture, it used to be in XP, it used to be like you know you have your API and things on the server side. So you have your .NET code where you actually used to do the API. Now it, you are we are not doing any more like in a server side coding. Everything will be handled on the uh, on the head, and you may want to integrate with some third party or something uh, and provide API so you can actually build that in the in the next stage using um, using API route. So these are the kind of thing, basic things that Next.js uh, platform provides. So when it comes to hosting, um, it, we really have like you know three options. Um, either we can host the site in Node server. Um, so basically, it's a Node runtime and uh, you are like you know all your requests are served by the own node runtime and if you want to scale it basically you add more nodes node server uh, so um, if you want to scale it horizontally um, but the other approach is actually serverless hosting uh, which is more efficient uh, we'll talk about it but basically in the serverless hosting um, you break it up into different uh, feature Next.js feature based on different Next.js feature and um, host them separately. Uh, it's not like in you know, a one node server. So you break it up and when you are scaling, basically you can scale different parts and it's, it's much more efficient way of doing things and that is the front end um like you know front end hosting that's what the term like you know coined by Parcel and other hosting provider um where you actually take advantage of serverless functions and like you know age or age middleware to uh, break your different parts of your website and and uh, host them um, as different uh, thing in the in the hosting system. You can also host um, a Next.js application uh, or the Sitecore website using static export. So when you run a Next build, it will actually export HTML, CSS, JSS, JS. And what you can do is basically take that export and drop it in a web server. Okay, and it it doesn't have to be node server or anything. It can be just a web server that can serve HTML, CSS, okay, and 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 JavaScript. So, lot of like you know JSS early, um, like you know, few years back when JSS came, and lot of actually site was hosted like that. Just just export the. Um, like you know, site artifacts to static files and 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 basically host it in a in IIS or like you know any sort of web server. And basically, what happens is HTML is then rendered and then JavaScript gets loaded to the um, to the site in the browser. And then from the browser, you actually use JavaScript to um, like you know. Uh, render things, fetch data, or things like that. That still has an option, um, but it it doesn't support um, many Next.js feature like you know the server side rendering or image optimization and things like that. It will not be supported by that, but th that still is an option. Okay, so if we actually Host on a Node server um, or, or a Node runtime. Um, this basically you can host it any place where 
you can run a node runtime. Okay, so that can be like you know you can have a um, on-premises server where you actually installed your node um, node runtime and you can run your Next.js application there or you can host a site code um, website on-premises by just running the um, node runtime on, on your server. Uh, you can use a cloud VM, similar thing, cloud VM or virtual private server. There are options you can actually um, like you know get on like you know get a virtual private server which is just a just like a server hosted somewhere in the internet and you can use uh, those servers install your node runtime there and basically and like you know host your website um, the the issue here is that by the way, like you know, all all these will support um, the Next.js features, like you know, server-side rendering or uh, SSG static uh, site generation, image optimization. All the features by no Next.js will be supported by by this. But only thing is about this is that um, that scalability or things like reliability or security and this kind of thing you have to do off your own okay for example if you want to um like you know cache your web pages and and like you know images and things static resources you have to actually put a cdn in front of them and you have to configure your cdn so 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 everything you have to do off your own and it will all depend on you to actually configure your um, hosting. It's not necessarily that that's a bad thing uh, for some client or some project that could be just fine. Uh, but if you need to think about very high scalable website, uh, then there there is definitely um, limitations here in terms of like you know hardware, like you know then amount of thing that you have to do of your own if you are going with um, node server hosting like you know using node runtime uh, probably the best option is to actually use azure app service or aws elastic beanstalk because that service is like you know it's a platform as a service um, so it auto scales and it actually uses technology uh, from the network's perspective, routing perspective, that uh, like in a much more efficient than something like uh, cloud VM or, or like in a virtual private server. So um, it, it can give you certain amount of scalability, uh, load balancing, those kind of things, if you choose um, Azure App Service. It's still running on a node uh, node runtime, but um, it's it's much more scalable than other options like Cloud VM. Um, the third option is to actually use something like a container uh, instead of uh, VM, and we have seen that in in site code. Like you know, you can use Kubernetes and orchestrate your containers so so that you can actually scale the uh, application by adding number of containers or reducing number of containers in your uh, Kubernetes um, structure. So that is an option, option two. Um, but there also you have to actually uh, do a lot of stuff of your own. Okay. Um, so the other part of it is actually um uh so so these are these are some benefit that i already talked about uh no server hosting like you know it's easy to configure um it supports all Next.js feature but the problem is like you know it's it's hard to scale um it takes significant effort for from our part to actually make it make it scalable it's possible but it 
like you know adds a lot of work um, so the other side is actually serverless um, hosting and there are serverless hosting is really a new business model that that started a few years back when Parcel or Netlify, um, they came and they actually add a layer on the top of Azure or um, Amazon, Amazon, AWS, and even even like you know now Google, um, they basically created a um, like you know a layer on the top of those hosting. Um, to make it more efficient and make it uh, serverless. Uh, so, uh, so they actually, uh, Varsal uh, typically, like you know, claim their their actually hosting is for front end hosting, which is next chase. Um, so what they what they do is actually we'll talk about. Um, how serverless hosting works uh, architecturally, uh, but they basically um, make it more scalable um, by breaking up different parts of the application in in, in different silos. Um, so that way they can actually scale the one that they need to uh, scale efficiently. Um, so the options there are like you know Parcel, Netlify, um, AWS, Amplify, uh, Azure Static Webs, um, Web App um, is still in preview, but it it supports almost all the Next.js features, and it will be a good option um, if if the if your client's organization is like you know deeply um, investing on Azure, um, they, this is probably something that they will like um, because it will support all the Next.js features. Um, but at the same time, you can host in Azure. Um, so, but this is still in preview, uh, so it's not recommended that you go with Azure Static Web App now. Uh, Cloudflare pages, it it doesn't actually support. Most of the next year's features, um, and um, basically, uh, I think it has problem with image optimization and ISR. Um, so, currently, all the next year's feature with, like you know, no surprise, Parcel supports all of them. Netlify also supports AWS. Amplify is pretty good. Uh, so, if you are going with server less hosting. Uh, you should probably think about um, first three. But there are differences how how they host. I'm not going to talk too much about uh, options like Netlify or AWS Amplify today. Um, we'll, we'll see how Varsal handles it. Um, so uh, that will give us a pretty good idea like you know how the Server side, um, uh, how the server side, um, uh, like in a serverless hosting, works. So what Varsal does is basically it divides this uh, hosting into four uh, four things. One is like you know static storage, um, which is as the uh, term suggests, like you know uh, basically you take your SSG static generation and it actually stores that in a static storage, okay? Anything to do with server, um, uh, like, you know, server-side rendering SSR, um, it actually handles through the serverless function. Um, also, the serverless function handles the ISR. Uh, so when a page is, like, you know, need to be refreshed, um, the um, pre-render happens, uh, like you know, it's a particular one page, right? And you are sending a request to get that page. Uh, it will first actually check if this page needs to be refreshed, and if it needs to be refreshed, 
first attempt it will return the stale page from the cache but then it will basically um, it will get you um, it will actually refresh the page using a uh, serverless function pre-render function for that page and store it in the static storage and put it in the cache so the next time when the request comes it is going to be served from the cache uh, the refresh page um, then there is age function so if you have some of your um, functionalities are put in the age function um, it, it it goes and like you know rendered from the from the age um, so that much more efficient uh, because age is like you know it 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 more efficient because age is close to the user and uh, although there are some limitations uh, of age functions um, it it has like you know storage limitations it has a timeout so if you have to do something very quick uh, you can actually create the age functions um, but it is a simple task uh, you can put it in the age function so it will be much more performant but you have to also think about the limitations that you you probably do not want to put a something like a long processing api call in the age function because there are timeout and things like that but and there are certainly things in the application that can be done in the edge function which are just very quick and basically uh, rendered from the edge without hitting the server at all uh, so those things in the serverless hosting um, it actually goes to the uh, edge functions and start from the edge and then image optimization so if if it is a image that is part of your uh, source control you actually uploaded the image for in virtual at the build time what virtual is going to do is actually optimize those images and like you know deploy them um, and when the image is rendered it will actually render the optimized image but if if the image is coming from external host for example say content hub or some other place um, versal um, like you know nextjs has a requirement to provide the height and width um, so it can decide like you know how to how to optimize the image and it is going to basically uh, optimize the image at the runtime and cache the image in cache so next time the optimized image will be um, will be rendered so those four things that serverless hosting does like you know basically break it up and then you can scale the scale your website as you need in in different like you know aspect of of this uh, so the, you have more options to actually um, scale at the at the hosting level so I'm sharing this diagram from from Marshall. Um, so the uh, so so this um, let's focus on the right side um, uh, when the um, when the request comes how that request gets processed by Versal and this this can be different for Netlify or other other platform uh, so when a request comes it actually and first thing to see about this is actually Versal is um, hosted on AWS okay so it, it actually uses AWS um, infrastructure so when it comes to like you know reliability and and stuff like that um, uh, so at the hardware level if there is any sort of failure or AWS is down for some reason um, so your website will be down to like you know Varsal is basically uh, hosted in uh, on AWS uh, so but they actually as I said that they they added a technology content hosting technology on the top of AWS um, 
So they actually use AWS Lambda functions and, and things like that to actually host their uh, websites. Uh, so uh, when a client request comes, it goes to a edge location. Obviously, like, you know, it, it, uh, I will talk about how the request routes in a bit, but basically it try to find out the closest location for the for the user where the request came from and solve from there. So it goes through the edge and it, it goes through the Varsal system and Varsal actually checks all sorts of things like, you know, whether this is deployed or like, you know, do I need to make a middleware edge call? Um, so middleware edge call always goes like, you know, every request goes through the middleware edge call if there is some sort of authentication and something you have to do. So you can do that in the uh, in the edge middleware. Uh, so it doesn't hit in the server. So if you are not authenticated, it will be thrown out. Your request will not go to the server at all. Um, so those kind of things um, are checked. And then the response uh, it, it fetches the response. Now, if the response is there available in the cache, and it, it hits the cache, like, you know, the page is there and image is there, all sorts of resources are there. Um, so it will be actually returned from the cache itself. So nothing will be processed. You just get everything from the cache and from the edge. So that's the most efficient way. Um, but if it, if, if the cache, doesn't have it, um, then it is going to check, like, you know, is this in, is this a static page? Is it, is it in the static storage? So get it from the static storage. Uh, is this a, is this a, um, like, you know, server side rendering? So it will make the serverless function call and get the page uh, from server, server side rendering. Uh, or if it is a image that, just happen to be like you know requested right now, so it will get the image, optimize the image, and return the image to the cache and return that to the to the client. Um, if it is a H function, um, it will actually run the H function and return information from H function immediately. Um, so that's the way it actually handles the request, and you can see like you know how it is breaking it into more efficient way. Now you can actually, um, if you have like, you know, more load on the server side rendering, more server uh, less function compute will be added and it will scale up and down as as needed, right? And in lot case, lot of cases, it's just that things will come from the cache and not at all be like, you know, um, uh, going to the server. So it's, it's just a lot efficient and a lot more scalable. And on the left side, it is uh, not going to talk much about that, but it, it, is, it shows how the build happens. So one thing about it is that, like, you know, when you run a build, it will actually build everything and move it to the static storage or, like, you know, your API endpoints all will be built and and like you know uh, put in deployed in the proper proper place. Uh, if you have API route, then that will go in the in the serverless uh, serverless function and will be uh, served from from there. Um, uh, also, when there is actually a ISR uh, incremental um, static rendering, then basically uh, that will go to the serverless function and it will generate a new uh, instance of the pages and then it will put in the static storage. Okay. So, um, so one other thing that I want to talk about is any cost load balancing. Um, on the, what makes it more performant is not only how the how the server uh, hosting the Next.js application. It also depends on how the requests are routed to, uh, to the server. And most efficient way 
the like in a modern way to do the load balancing and routing the request is actually anycast and some of this system like you know if you are using azure web service or amazon beanstalk um, or parcel uh, they actually use anycast and the, the the routing to the either node server or serverless hosting will be done through the anycast and that itself will give a lot of uh, like you know a uh, lot of performance um, so that's why when choosing a hosting provider you need to see like you know what kind of network topology that hosting provider is using and if it is not using any cost then you definitely you are missing some uh, scaling factor there so how any cost works is basically a single IP address will be announced from multiple locations so there are different data center and so how how the request comes like you know you will go and you will try to connect to a website right and you will provide the domain name and it will go to a dns and dns will actually translate it to a ip address and your i your isp will take that and then it will actually try to find out where is the server for this IP address, right? And and it will actually, like, you know, connect to that IP address or that server. So what Anycast does is, like, you know, it, it actually, a single IP address is connected to different data center and those data center actually announces that, well, I have this IP address, I have this IP address and that goes through this like you know border gateway protocol so all the isps that like you know in case of parcel or something they they do, they know like you know where this ip address located and then all this out of all this location it decides like you know what is the closest location for this user for this ip address so it measures the closest location and send the request to that data center and once it is actually goes to that data center and then it actually that that data center takes it and and like you know use load balancing in in the server or if it is serverless like you know it it basically load balance at that level but the key is like you know any gives you the ability to choose the one which is closest to the to the user um, also um, also what it does is since this all the servers are available uh, all these data centers are available for this IP address um, if one of them goes down uh, that's just that that data center is not available so but other 10 data centers are available then the isp actually chooses one that next close to this uh, to this user so so that gives a lot of reliability uh, for serving content because it's just transparent one goes down other 10 are available uh, because one ip address is connected to multiple uh, data centers so, so first of all, since it chooses the closest one, um, it actually reduces the latency, right? So it, it's much more efficient. It actually saves time to return the data. Uh, so, so reduction of latency gives more performance. Improved scalability, I just talked about, like, you know, uh, you can add more, more location and basically request can be distributed um, into like you know more uh, data centers so you can scale uh, in that sense um, increased availability I, I just talked about it basically one one IP address is off um, or something happened there are 10 other or 15 other available uh, to to serve the request um, also since the um, since the um, ISP determines like you know where to send the request uh, it is not one server or one data center it's very difficult to actually 
uh, do the DDoS attack, denial of services attack, because um, whatever bot is sending the request for DDoS, it, it just doesn't go to one place. Okay, it actually gets distributed. So it, it actually gives certain amount of protection for um, security and protection for DDoS attack. So those are the benefit of any cost load balancing. Um, and if a provider, hosting provider is using that, that means that it will give you added performance. Um, so it's just a diagram to show like, you know, how efficient any cost is. The one on the top is actually geocast. Uh, geocast means like, you know, if you are in a region, your your request will start from that region. You, one on the top, you can see that anything that is in US actually start from US. Anything is in like, you know, South America or Africa, uh, they are start from uh, that region only. Whereas in any cast, it doesn't care about geolocation. If you are in like, you know, uh, say in South America, even if you have a data center there, maybe your US data center is close to you and it will be served from there. Um, like here in Africa, a data center, um, there, there is a data center, but then like, you know, you have another option to serve from Europe, so it connects to, to Europe. So it really, what it does is actually look at the closest one and uh, serve content or, or request from there. So that's the important factor because that keeps us the more performance and scalability and more fault tolerance. So that should be the factor for choosing a hosting provider. Now, when you choose a hosting provider for your client or for your project, what you want to consider? Uh, obviously, performance and scalability is a big factor, but as I said before, like, you know, it just all depends client to client, like, you know, project to project. Um, a client, like, you know, with $10 million revenue, uh, the per perspective can be quite different from a client which is like, you know, uh, which has revenue like $4 billion. Um, so their, their ability to actually spend is, is different. So, so when you are thinking about like, you know, hosting, um, you have to actually think about cost. So maybe, maybe the amount of performance that you are looking for is not matching to your cost. So, so you decide what kind of performance you want and how much you can, you can spend. But definitely, like, you know, performance and scalability is a factor um, when you think about, like, you know, high scalable application, Black Friday, Thanksgiving, lot of traffic, you have to actually, like, you know, solve requests uh, for that kind of uh, traffic. So you obviously go with high performance hosting provider. Um, but then reliability and fault tolerance also, like, you know, you have to look at, um, as I was talking about any cost, uh, like, you know, what, are, what is the, uh, like, you know, risk of losing data or, um, how uh, how your um, how quickly like you know you can get back to uh, the website if website is down so your architecture and topology all will actually uh, influence that so so if if you are running on a node runtime node server and your like you know your server goes down you have to bring up another road runtime. So it might take some time, but it, for some client, it can be okay. Um, if the server, if the uh, site is down for 15 minutes, um, so that they are fine. But for some client site down, 15 minutes can be like you know, millions of dollars of loss. So, so you have to think about how reliable and fault tolerant this, the hosting provider is. And basically based on that, you have to see like, you know, does it auto scale? Does it like, you know, um, 
if something goes down is is like you know how it falls back falls back to different systems so 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 those are important things um obviously hosting cost um so for some client um like you know cost matters um performance so not so much uh, for some client performance matters like you know they want to spend a lot more on on the um on the site hosting um so so the important thing about uh, hosting is also like you know what feature is supports um so you if you need like you know server side rendering uh, that's the way you want to architect your application and your hosting provider does not support server side rendering okay then like you know, obviously you will not go to that hosting provider um so you you need to make a decision about that like you know what feature next feature is important for uh for my project for my application so and you have to see if a hosting provider is supporting all those or not um the thing is that sometime and and this happens to me uh with one of my client is like you know uh data privacy uh some companies uh customer data is actually extremely important for them and because there are legal implication uh so what they do is basically they build their system based on their like you know privacy and security okay and they don't have the liberty to cho choose any hosting provider because they have to abide the rule and legal stuff um so one of my clients had to actually stick to azure because they actually built their platform and everything and spend lot of money uh to all the required like you know security uh policy and things um in in azure so even if they had like you know they are provided virtual as an option for the hosting provider they couldn't choose it because a lot of the things that they need actually they cannot do in virtual um and so obviously they had to actually fall like you know they had to use azure and like you know app services for for hosting provider um they had to scale their application uh differently uh than like you know um they, they they didn't have option for serverless um serverless host hosting um because the um the uh, like you know data privacy and things uh, policies took higher uh, higher importance okay so so those are the things that i usually look at when uh, i i um consult with my client and use that as a factor for choosing the hosting provider okay uh i have a blog i wrote about it and you can take a look um but these are some of this uh site that helped me uh, by the way thomas uh bomb was uh in sitecore he is not there anymore uh, but he had done excellent work to actually like you know show which hosting provider supports next js features and what features are not supported so very useful for uh for finding out what is what are supported in the site uh, hosting provider all right that's all i had two minutes i don't know like you know any we have any time to have a question but i don't think there are many people here to ask question unless it so, uh himadri i have a question uh, mm -hmm. where you mentioned that there is a image optimization available uh, in versal so mm -hmm. how is it uh, like we just connect or uh, how it works exactly our site core images are uh, published to versal then it is optimized or what yeah so so image optimization is actually 
a, a functionality built into next js okay um i i don't know like you know exactly how it does it um like you know internally how it actually does it um but basically if you use the image tag in next js image tag um it will like you know take your image and optimize it uh like you know it, it it's not going to be your original image um so and if the image is coming from external source like you know for example media library or or mm -hmm. content hub uh only way it can actually optimize the image at the runtime right so it will get the image and at the runtime it will process it and generate a optimized image and place it in the in the um cdn or in the cache so um so that it can actually serve the image uh, optimize image okay so um but uh, internally how actually it does um i don't know um but okay. if your image is in the in the next js application itself at the build time it actually optimize create a like you know if you do next build okay um like you know npm npm um what npm start build right and basically um it will generate the optimized image okay right we are uh any this was yeah. very helpful himadri thank you well thank you hetal for joining we are expecting little more people but anyway molik you have something i uh, no i'm good all right okay thank you thanks guys thank you have a nice day